So with that, I'd like to introduce someone you've already heard from today, Benny Barzile, who is one of the world's experts in cybersecurity, and his colleague, Sergei Gribov. Okay, can you hear me okay? We're going to have some fun. I want to talk about cybersecurity. I'm going to talk for seven minutes, and then Sergei is going to talk for seven minutes, and then we're going to talk about, we're going to do something. <laughs> So I don't want to talk about myself. If you want to read about me, you can do it a little bit. I want to tell you just two things about myself. I have a company. The company is doing cybersecurity consulting around the world, and I'm the CTO of the Cyber Research Center at the Tel Aviv University. This is it. I usually speak very fast. You have to listen very carefully. I'm going to talk about several things. If you've been to one of my, uh, my, one of my talks, I'm sorry, I might repeat some of the things because I feel that they're my business. So, we're going to go back in time, we're going to go into 1969. 1969 was a very important year. You know that, you probably know that. What happened in 1969? Neil Armstrong was the first person to walk on the moon, correct? The Beatles issued every road, the Mustangs. And another thing happened, a small network was created. The name of this network was the ARPANET. Some of you heard about that. And this, this small network had a lot of trust in it. You know why? Because there were all the people who used this small network knew each other, right? They trusted each other in real life, so they trusted each other on the same space. All the devices that were connected to this network were controlled. The people who built this network were in control of those devices. And all the applications that were implemented on this network were created by the people who implemented this network. In a very short time, the ARPANET became the internet as we know it today. What do we have today? We have billions of users who don't know each other, definitely don't trust each other. We have no clue what it is connected to the internet, right? Everything is connected to the internet. Nobody knows what's connected to the internet. There are so many different softwares. Some of them are malicious by design. Trust became a big challenge. Now, because nobody expected the ARPANET to become such a huge success, when it was designed, it was not designed with security in mind. It was only designed with connectivity in mind. Most of the problems that we see today in the world of cyberspace, the source of which is the fact that the internet was not designed with security in mind. If we had a chance to redesign the internet, we would do it happily. But we're stuck with it. And what about the future? What's going to happen? We know that we cannot talk about the future without talking about the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is such an amazing future, such an amazing world. So many things are going to be interconnected. The Internet of Things allows us to dream, to create amazing stuff, to invent things that can change humanity. Things that does the vice that send you a message when you need to buy more eggs. And things like this smart uh, hairbrush that will tell you if you're brushing your hair correctly. And things like this smart toothbrush that will tell you if you're brushing your tooth correctly. And things like this smart condom that tells you how bad you are. So this is this is what we do with the internet of things. Okay. But but there is a major role, a, a rule in the world of cyber security, and I talked about this rule yesterday, and I talked about this rule now, and I'm gonna talk about this basic rule again. Everybody here in this room knows this rule. This is a basic rule. Nevertheless, this rule is the engine of the cybersecurity industry. This rule is the reason that in the years to come, cybersecurity will become a more and more and more important issue. And this basic rules, rule that everybody here knows says. The change always equals new opportunities plus new threats. Innovation is a two-sided coin. Every new technology creates new problems. And the world of IoT is going to create amazing new problems. And we could have had a long three hours discussion just about that, but we have three more minutes. And I want to touch two things. So the world of IoT will create many new things to attack many new ways to attack them, right? and many new ways to monetize crime. That means that the incentive of the criminals will go up. That means that we will see more criminals and more cyber attacks. And we already know that the industry will fail in creating secure devices. 
We are not going to create such a thing. We are actually working right now. We are working right now on creating the problems of tomorrow. Why? Because it's not, it's not cost effective to create such new devices. Those toys makers, those IoT makers, they want to create those cheap gadgets. They don't care about security. It's like a ten dollar device. They don't want to implement thirty dollars in uh, security solutions inside it. So the problems are common. And I'll give you two examples. I gave this example yesterday. You're sitting in this autonomous car, right? The car drives itself. And you're there. You're not, not doing anything. You're, you're, I don't know. You're sleeping. You're, I don't know, sitting on on the roof. You're. Um, I, I'm sorry for choosing those pictures. I'm sure I had a reason. So when well, you're doing whatever you want in this autonomous car, because it drives itself, and suddenly, even though you didn't touch it, the radio turns on, and then you hear this mechanical voice saying something weird, like, "No, we need the voice, the volume high in my computer, very high, hello, dear sir, very high, like five times as high." Hello, dear sir. It is a nice day today, and we hope you are enjoying your ride. Please notice that we have taken full control over your car. Don't worry; we mean you no harm. You are kindly requested to wire transfer 12 bitcoin points to our account in the next 10 minutes. Otherwise, we will sadly have to kill you. Have a nice day, and thank you for your cooperation. Now you're sitting in the car. The car, the car moves very, very fast. You know that you're about to reach a bridge. What do you do? <laughs> so assets hijacking is something that we're going to see. Hackers are going to hijack our, our cars and our assets. This is a new type of ransomware. But now instead of hijacking our files, they will hijack us. This is something that's going to happen. And it's going to happen with many things, not just cars. With our uh, uh, ACs, with our ovens, with our uh, toothbrush, with the, the, the cup, with everything. When we have it, it's going to happen. And the second problem that we have to mention when we're talking about the Internet of Things is uh, privacy mining. Privacy mining is a big issue today, right? Uh, we feel that we don't have a lot of our privacy left. So big companies like Facebook and Google, they know about us more than we know about ourselves. You have to accept that. They know much more about us than we know about ourselves. And privacy mining is going to be a big deal in the years to come. And the major reason for that is that we're moving from a world where we are always off. That means that if you want to take a picture, you have to, do, to take your phone out, to turn on the camera, and then take a picture, to a world where we're always on. That means that if you don't want to take a picture, you have to do something. Otherwise, those things will record everything that we do. We already have those things that record every time we uh, our steps and our position and our heart rate. Those things do not stop. So privacy mining is going to be a big deal because Google, Facebook, and other companies, they are big machines. Where if you put privacy on one side, you get profit on the other side. They know how to transform privacy into money. And now they're going to have many new ways, many new ways to collect data about us. So think about that. Like you're brushing your hair, right? And someone calls you, says, we're offering a training course for how we should brush your hair better. Why? Because we saw you're not doing that well. If you brush your teeth, you will get a phone call saying, someone saying, uh, uh, we saw that you don't know how to brush your teeth. Right? We're selling a training course. It's going to cost only $150. And trust me, you need it. And obviously, yeah, you know, it's going to come. Uh, <laughs> training. I don't know. Okay, so where do we go from here? I want to conclude everything you just said. Uh, the problem is bigger than most people think. Right now, so we have a problem with our brain. Our brain only knows how to deal with threats that are being identified through our senses. If we can feel it, if we can touch it, if we can smell it, if we can taste it, if we can hear it, I think I got them all, then our brain knows that this is a problem. If I told you that there is a bomb here, our brain will tell us we have to be careful. But right now, while we're sitting here, some of us are being hacked. Right now, there is a super active warfare going on. Hundreds of thousands of cyber warriors, and when I say cyber warriors, I mean state-sponsored hackers. Right now, hundreds of thousands of, thousands of state-sponsored hackers are being engaged in the largest world war we've ever seen. But this war has no pictures of crying baby, no long cities, no tanks rolling in the main streets, so it doesn't feel like a real war. 
on the same internet that we use to buy things, to uh, register kids to school, to order something from us, but the same internet, we have nations who fight each other. And the problem, trust me, it's much, much, much bigger than most people uh, think. So, cybersecurity is a big issue. We need smart people, we need talented people to come and work in the world of cybersecurity and solve the problems of tomorrow. And we have to remember, and Rob said that, and he is doing like this amazing work with moderating this stage. It's all about trust. We have to trust each other. We have to work together in order to make sure we're going to have a safer future. Um, I think that the future of Israel is in working with other countries. Um, I really want to do something with other people. It doesn't matter what it is. If you have any ideas on how to do something together, I'm into it. Talk to each other. Exchange business cards. The things that happen in this room are, are as important as the things that are going on outside. Talk to each other. Don't just keep uh, in touch with those people that you already know. It is a very important thing. Thank you so much. Sergei Thank you. Yeah, it's very hard to be as expression of many, so I'll be... Uh, I don't have slides. I'm uh, my name is Sergey Grimov. I'm a partner of New Capital, we international venture firm, a venture, venture firm. We are kind of interesting. We uh, all the partners in different locations. So we invest in Europe, Israel, and the US. I'm actually based in the US, but I'm spending a lot of time in Israel and Europe. And one of the verticals I'm particularly passionate about uh, is cyber security. So that's why. Uh, look at this panel. By the way, I'm a money guy now, but I used to be technical guy, so I still understand what's, what's going on. So from uh, from a venture capital point of view, like from my point of view, venture capital firms like markets which are growing very fast. Now, if we're talking about cyber security market, it's uh, same fast as probably understatement. If you look at the numbers uh, of cybercrime incidents which are reported, it's growing, as far as I remember, about 60% yearly rate for the last like seven, eight years, which kind of, uh, if you imagine the numbers, it's like, it's really big. Like if you look at the stuff, uh, like the biggest bank robbery of the last century, it was, I think, about 10 million dollars. That's the amount of money people could take and carry over. If you look at the target breach, for example, which happened, what was it, like 15? Uh, the cost of the whole breach was about 1 billion dollars. Now, if you think about it, uh, the problem of cybersecurity is like everywhere. What many said, every single system which people put in place. Uh, when people put it in place, they think about usability, they think about uh, how to make it easy for people to use. Most of, the, most of the systems, they nobody thinks about how much lines of code we put in, how many bugs. And in general, if you think about uh, any system, on average, per thousand line of code, you have about 20 to 30 different bugs in the program. So, uh, the system which put person on the moon in 69, which many mentioned, I don't remember exactly the number of lines of code it had, but it was something about 100,000 lines of code. If you look at the Microsoft Office, it had about half a million lines, uh, no, 500 million lines of code. If you look at the cars now, we're talking about cars now, we're not talking about anonymous cars, just now. Uh, on average, car now has also like tens to hundred millions line of code, which means what in the car you are driving, you have several thousand bugs in software. Every single bug in software can mean uh, basically security breach if somebody figures out how to use it. So what happens is. Security, think about this Chinese wall you try to build in terms of security, but the problem with Chinese wall is it's enough to have a single crack and the people will get in. So you're basically trying to defend against any threat which you don't know, but it always we always will have problems, we always will have uh, 
uh, security measures. So, from a market perspective, it's a huge market. It's a market which is growing. The number of problems in cybersecurity is growing exponentially. The number of companies in cybersecurity is not growing as fast as the number of problems. So, if you if you think about like state of cybersecurity today. We're probably in a much worse state than we used to be 10 years ago, 20 years ago, etc. So that's kind of general in terms of how big is the problem, how many problems need to be solved. Now, many mentioned uh, state-sponsored uh, cyber warfare and things like that. What I like to say about it, I, I usually say, like, it used to be, what people don't realize, what it used to be, what, in order to build WMD, weapon of mass destruction, you need to have, like, very serious science, you need to have a lot of money, you need to have serious industrial capability. You, you need to have assets which were only available for, like, really big countries. Like, how many countries actually have weapons of mass destruction nowadays? Not that many. But if you think about it, Nowadays, what people don't realize is cyber weapons, they become a weapon, weapon of mass destruction. People don't realize how easily it is relatively. Now, to turn off the electricity in the country, and let's say you turn off all the electricity in the country, it's probably worse than if you just drop the nuclear bomb on the country, in many cases. So the problem is you have weapons of mass destruction which can be developed by five to six people in a garage and it can be developed by any country you don't need that much of the assets to, to do it and on top of it this thing can be launched the way what nobody will be able to figure out where it came because in, in many cases in case of cyber breaches there is really no way of 100 percent be sure where the breach came from uh, because it's very easy to, uh, to kind of hide your tracks so that's kind of to scare you a little bit. And actually, interesting question I want to uh, on, on the privacy. I have a question. Raise your hand if you think what there is a place somewhere where they know your location any given point in time. Basically, somebody tracking your location all the time, 100% of the time. Who, who thinks his location is tracked 100% of the time? Oh, okay. It's like about half of the people think it is. Now, out of the second half of things, the location not tracked. Uh, who knows how to turn off uh, location tracking in Google, for example? So, the other people who think the location not tracked, I suggest you. If you use Android phone, just Google to myactivitygoogle.com. Go there, and you will see a lot of interesting things. By the way, if you're using the iPhone, it's it's worse because on Google at least you can look at it and you can turn it off. In iPhone, you can, but it's still tracked. And Google and Apple are not the only company who is tracking you. There are a bunch of others. So basically, if you if you have your uh, your smartphone in your pocket, trust me. At any given point of time, somebody can know where you're located. You don't need GPS trackers, etc. And it's becoming worse and worse. It's, uh, every time you look at anything on the internet, every time you use any application on your phone, just for the, for the sake of argument, people should think what whatever you do, it's always public. Whatever you put on the internet, it's always public. Whatever you do on your phone, it's public. Wherever you go, and actually, in some cases, whatever you tell to your friend who's sitting next to you, it's also may become public because your phone has a microphone. And I already saw the cases where some of the ads network were learning something through the uh, listening to a conversation about people. So all this information is somewhere that you have no idea where it is. And frankly, even if you think you can have a control of it, just forget about it. You don't have a control. So that's on the privacy issue. Uh, I think we scared people enough, probably. So, uh, yeah, companies who deal with cybersecurity are going to make a lot of money. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing for me. <laughs> and, and also, there is a lot of areas where 
where you can kind of apply your efforts and do something good. And there are, uh, frankly, there are a lot of companies who are building some security solutions. I don't think it's ever going to be the situation where everybody's going to be 100% protected. It's always kind of a cat and mouse game. So there are new solutions uh, to protect against some security threat, and there are new security threats coming, but it's... Let's begin. Okay, so let me ask you, so let, let me ask you a few questions. We need to wrap up in two minutes. Let me ask you uh, a few questions. Um, if you have an iPhone, please raise your hand. If you have an Android, please raise your hand. If you have Windows based phone, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyone here with Blackberry? You have a Blackberry. So, this is a web conference. <laughs> Cybersecurity problems and pretty much every area have some open calls. 